This is scandalous. I also wanted to talk about this. Let's talk about this. Scandal. Ah, another Friday in New York City. Okay, people, am I the only one who finds stuff like this scandalous anymore? Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Adelise Velez and it is a self-care Friday. Now you're probably wondering, where am I going? What am I going to do? What beautiful place might she be going? Where is dinner going to be? Nowhere. I'm not cooking it. I'm not buying it. I'm not driving to it. I'm not going to do a damn thing tonight. I literally got dressed up just so that I could sit in my room all by myself and relax and do absolutely fucking nothing. Oh, <gasps> sorry. <laughs> Matter of fact, my hair looks like it's been done up, but really, it's just in a bunch of braids because I'm doing some kind of hair care treatment to myself. Otherwise, I am not going anywhere. But I digress from what I'm talking about today, which is self-care and just indulging and in doing absolutely what you want to do. If you haven't already read this story and you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, Eric Ulrich used to be city councilman of District 32 in Queens. That was until Mayor Eric Adams became the mayor and he basically appointed Eric Ulrich to be like his right-hand man. And then he was promoted or he was like given a job as the commissioner of the buildings department. I went and I looked at his work experience and where he graduated in college and I don't know if I would want someone who graduated in communications to be the commissioner of the buildings department but Eric Adams thought he was a good fit so I don't know that right there starts popping questions in my head right. Let's fast forward to today when you open up this article and here's the part that's really fucked up and this is why we should all be careful this is why we should all be careful about the things that we say on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter because they really used everything Eric Ulrich. Yes. <gasps> oh my God, Sandra got such good grades. Boy, give me five. Tom Tug Hog Hot Mom. Hot Mom. <laughs> Sorry, that was funny. Good job. Good job. I show Daddy. I can't wait for you to show Daddy. Yeah. Okay. So what's really sad about this article and is that they used anything and everything Eric Ulrich ever said on like Facebook or Instagram to kind of paint a story of someone who might have already been giving signs about telling on themselves. And it's just a little sad because, I mean, I'm, I'm not defending him. I don't really know what happened. But anyway, let's just read this article, okay? You guys ready? Here we go. Eric, Eric Ulrich stepped down as Mayor Adams Department of Buildings Commissioner. Again, that was weird. Why would you be a commissioner of the buildings department if you have like no experience like uh, you realize that i was in the middle of building a restaurant and i couldn't ask any questions about my restaurant because i wasn't a contractor and yet you got a commissioner of buildings department who just graduated in communications anyway uh sorry <laughs> got totally off topic eric ulrich stepped down as mayor adams department of buildings commissioner thursday just two days after it emerged that he He's facing a criminal investigation over illegal gambling. Illegal gambling? Illegal gambling, right? That's okay. Bad. Ulrich, a former city councilman of District 32, like I said, uh, for about, I don't know, four, eight, eight years, submitted his resignation in order to not be a distraction <coughs> element for Adams' administration. Hey, the mayor told reporters at an unrelated press conference in Queens, I respect that decision. And... For his family and for the commissioner, we wish him well as he goes through this review, Adam said. Oh, how heartfelt. All full of shit. Anyway, Kazir Velenchik, Kazir Velenchik, Ehrlich's deputy, will take over as acting commissioner, according to Adam's spokesman, Fabian Levy. We have full confidence in the team at the DOB, and the agency remains fully operational. No city service will be impacted, Levy said. Ulrich's exit marks the first resignation of the Adams-appointed commissioners since the mayor took office in January. Hey, you're doing better than President Trump. I think he had like five by now. Anyway, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not talking about Trump. Let's not make this about Trump. Okay. 
Ehrlich's exit marks the first resignation of Adams' appointed commissioner since the mayor took office in January. Ehrlich was elevated to $240,000 per year. Commissioner's post in May after serving as a senior advisor to Adams in City Hall for the first stretch of the administration. The abrupt departure comes on the heels of revelations that Ehrlich is wrapped up in a criminal probe undertaken by Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. Good luck, Alvin. Really, I show you all of my support. I hope you don't go missing. I'm sorry. It's just because if you read the rest of this article, it just sounds like something out of Batman, like Batman Forever or whatever Batman that was. Anyway, on Tuesday morning, investigators from Bragg's office served Ehrlich with a search warrant outside his home in Queens, questioning, questioned him for hours, and seized his cell phone as part of a criminal inquiry, according to sources familiar with the matter. Details about the investigation remain murky, but sources have confirmed it revolves around illegal gambling. A spokesman from Bragg's declined to comment on Thursday. You better, because guess what? The mayor is a police officer, and now you're like in the DA, and so like, the movie is like the movie is in the making right now like you are basically going for the mayor's ex right hand man who which again I'm sorry I did not read the rest of this article but who might be related to the mob like to, I don't even know good luck good luck Alvin Alvin brag I hope when you get over this you have a lot to brag about okay sorry early could not be reached on Thursday of course not <laughs> I wouldn't want to be reached either. Uh, though the DA's probe exact focus is unknown, it is known that Ehrlich, a registered Republican, has a prolific gambling history. Prolific? Okay, that's a that's a interesting word. Um, Ehrlich's annual financial disclosure shows he ranked in upward of fifty thousand dollars in lottery winnings last year. Gosh, I hope that went to help his family. During his year of counsel, Ehrlich declared tens of thousands of dollars in gambling winnings to ethics filming show. Ethics fi filming sh filming's show. What is that? All right. I don't know. We'll look it up later. I guess I'm a lucky guy, Ehrlich told the Daily News in 2016 for winning more than $10,000 at a slot machine. Lucky him. Also, last year... Ehrlich revealed on Facebook that he was struggling with alcoholism and trying to get sober. Now, that's messed up because that was a man admitting he had a problem, and now they're using it against him. So if, I guess now if you're a drinker, you're also a gambler, and you're also like the head of a gambling ring. I don't know. What are they trying to say there? Come on. I mean, I'm not defending him or not defending him. I'm just saying like, this is fucked up. This is why you need to be really careful about what you say on social media. Anyway, the COVID pandemic has affected people in different ways. I regret to say that I developed a drinking problem, Ehrlich wrote. What used to be mainly a social activity and a way to cope with stress has now become too frequent and self-destructive, Ehrlich, whose former council district included Howard Beach. I'm not even going to talk about Howard Beach. I grew up in Howard Beach. We're not going to touch Howard Beach. Uh, district included Howard Beach has in the past maintained personal ties with Robert Pisani, a reputed associate of the Bambino crime family. This is like straight out of a movie, I swear. Like, are you guys following this? Like, I've got some theories of like conspiracies and I might talk about it if we have enough time. Anyway, Pisani was sentenced to 13 months in prison in 2018 after pleading guilty to collecting illegal gambling debt in furthering a racketeering conspiracy court papers show federal prosecutors charged in an indictment that Pisini also supervised an illegal gambling business, though he did not acknowledge doing so as part of his plea. Ahead of Pisini's sentence, Ehrlich wrote a letter to the presiding judge asking him to go easy on the mob associated, referring to him as a personal friend and a good guy. Good guy. Good guy. Is that is that a mob movie, Good Guy, or is it just Good Fellas? <laughs> I've been to that diner. It's closed now, but it was a good diner. Mr. Pettini is a kind person, devoted family man, and a selfless individual. He's in court. He's a known mob guy. 
What? I don't even know. At his Queen's press conference Thursday, Adams distanced himself from an illegal any illegal wrongdoing involving Ehrlich. Okay, run away quickly. Run away, Adam. Try to get away. Run away! I do not take reports that are in the media as what actually took place, he said. I have not heard from the reviewing body. They have not communicated to me. So I don't know what the allegations are. Because people printed or rumoring those things, I don't know. Since taking office, Adams has prided himself on giving people a second chance to people both inside and outside of his administration with his with histories of illegal trouble. I'm about giving people the opportunity, he said in February, amid revelations about his close friendship with a couple of ex-convicts. I mentor people every day. You would be surprised at the type of people that I mentor I to put them back on track. Good, good going, Adams. Good going. I mean, you were a police officer. You probably, you should be mentoring people. I hope, hopefully you were, you know, they were real reformed people who turned to be good. Anyway, there's more in the article, and I'm just, like, dying to see how this all plays out or if, like, we're never going to hear about it again. Is this, like, a one-shot article or, like, are they going to keep following up, following up New Yorkers on what's really going on? I'm so happy to have you guys here with me because I really didn't want to go anywhere. I am going to take all of this off and then I'm going to go to bed. Anyway, here's my conspiracy. I'm going to be super quick. Okay, so when I was a kid, I found Rudy Giuliani. Like his existence, I was like so proud of him and I'm like, oh, I'm so happy the city turned itself around. But I found that it was like really with ease that he accomplished like taking out the mafia, right? couple years later I read I'm older obviously and I read this article about how he went to an event and like with all the police in New York City and the event was on Russo's on the Bay now I found that really really weird because it's a mafia related neighborhood everybody knows that I don't have to tell I don't have to tell you that you can look it up anywhere and I was like why would Rudy Giuliani go to an event in Howard Beach, like you should have just gone to Whitestone too while you were at it. And I found it really, really weird. And in the article, it mentions, I think it was a New York Times article, it mentions that people think that Russo's on the Bay gives one dollar to some like really big mafia family for every plate it sells. After that, Rudy left the Rudy left the event and he didn't want to, I think he didn't even speak about it, but like he did wanted to make a big deal or said something about like not wanting to be involved with the mafia and how he did not know that right there was the first red flag now you fast forward into like 2022 and you look at most of the people appointed in jobs in the city and you realize that many of them are white males italians right and it's just like hmm chinkies that is interesting um anyway if you go on to think about other things that have gone on with Giuliani, it kind of makes you think to yourself or makes me think to myself, did the mafia go to jail or did some people take a hit so that they could restructure how the mafia was working and basically instead of killing people and like doing all these crazy illegal things, they decided to get jobs within the city and they used their money for political influence and they end up getting jobs in the city? Is that what happened? And did Giuliani help all of that? Anyway, that's my little conspiracy for tonight. I could be totally wrong, and I don't know, but I think that people with money and power influence the government. We all think that. We all know that. And this is just one little conspiracy of the very many, many conspiracies that go on in big cities like New York, for that matter, anywhere. Anyway, I'm signing off tonight. Love you guys. Ciao, Wakala, for now. And Xander saying goodbye to you. Bye. I'm going to go take this off and go to bed. Anyway, I'm signing off tonight. Love you guys. Ciao, Wakala, for now. And Xander saying goodbye to you. Bye.